Welcome to the first video in the home automation wars. We're gonna have Home Assistant against Node Red. Today's first round will be a morning greeting. The morning greeting needs to be run only once in the kitchen at a certain time. And in the message, I want to know the current temperature and also wanna know what's the weather forecast. First, I'm gonna build it in Node Red. Then afterwards in the video, we're gonna build in Home Assistant and then I'm gonna compare the two together. And this is going to enable you to decide which home automation platform you think is most suited for this type of automation. Stick to the end of the video because you'll see a sneak peek of the second episode of this home automation series. If you want me to build an automation, then drop a comment down below, upvote it, and it'll be part of this series. Instead of me doing a generic video just comparing the features of Home Assistant and Node-RED, I thought it's going to be a lot easier to see the practical examples. Now this is Geo from Smart Home Makers, and let's roll the intro. So jumping into Node-RED, let's start with the automation. First thing we need to do is we need to drag in the event state and let's click over here. So you can see this from this little triangle, we need to configure it. So this is gonna be our triggering point. So I'm gonna search for my binary sensor. Picking the kitchen underscore motion, we want the state to be on, on done. So now we need to find the time range node, which is a function. And what this function is going to basically tell us, it's going to tell us, uh, it's going to enable the data to flow between a certain time. So let's say between seven and noon, click on done. And now we're going to start connecting everything up. These connections are called wires, if you're not familiar with Node Red. So we're going to need the current state of a few things. For example, the current state of the actual weather. And for that, we're using weather.home. And I'm also picking the temperature from that attribute. Let me show you quickly. So jumping into the developer tools, we go to weather.home. And this is going to be our state. So currently, it says it's cloudy. And the temperature is 17.5 degrees. Will come from temperature. So you could get things like humidity, pressure, wind, any of these attributes. I'm going to show you how you can get this information in both Node Red and in Home Assistant automations. So jumping back into Node Red. So we need to find that current state. So let's look for the current state, drag it in, let's double click on it, and let's type in weather. And we're going to look for the weather.home. And we want this in, yep. And now we're going to be using our call service. So we drag in the call service. The service that we need to use, it's our text-to-speech service. So you probably know that I use Nabucaz if you're coming from my courses. And I've also made a video about Nabucaz and the benefits of it. But anyway, regardless, if you use any type of text-to-speech that you've got enabled, so Google Translate, Amazon Poly, whatever you have, right? So in here, we're gonna say broadcast. The domain that I'm using is the TTS. Service, I'm using cloud underscore say. An entity ID, it's gonna be a media player. So media player dot kitchen speaker. So you can see that we have auto sensing, we have the entities pulling in. However, we can pick any entity, it's not limiting us to media players. In fact, if I search for binary sensors, I can pick binary sensors, you know, will be incorrect in this example. So in this expression over here, we need to use some curly bracket. So we open the curly bracket, double quote, then you will need the double quote to close and a comma to add your next value. And then once you're finished, you will close the very curly bracket. So let me give you an example. So if I go message and then I open the quotes and I say hello, then this will be a hello, a simple message. If I add a, uh, sorry, it needs a, a colon here between the two, right? So this is the key and this is the value. So we'll do the same thing, a comma, and now we can add something like language. So if you click on the three dots, you can actually expand this and you can see this a lot better. So in Nabucaz, with Nabucaz text-to-speech, you have different language settings, depending on what language and what accent that you want to use. So if you're using like something like Italian or Spanish, you can just change the language and then have your text in Spanish and it will uh, sound like it's a native uh, speaker. That's quite a nice feature, I feel. It's very personal. So we've got this sorted now. Now we, we are missing uh, some information, right? We've just got this standard hello, it's not doing anything else special. So let's get the information that we actually need. For that, we're gonna be using another node called the debug node. So let's go to debug, drag it in. And let's do all of the connections that 
were missing. Got the message payload, so let's double click on the message payload and change this to complete message object and click on done. This is gonna allow us to see everything that we need in this debug window over here. So click on this little debug messages and we'll see everything. So once we are done, at this stage we can deploy. So let's click on deploy, confirm deploy. So it's all been deployed. Now I'm gonna to go to the developer tools over here. I'm gonna set this kitchen motion sensor to on. As done, and we can see it's on. So around this got an error message. So remember to add in the colon here. So I've figured that out. So what I'm going to do now is go over here, set on. This is running. So we've had the hello message, so we can see everything flowing through quite nicely. Now this is where we can analyze some of the data that we've got in Node Red. We can see the payload is cloudy. So the payload in our example is the state of the attribute. And here we can dig in and find more information. So if we keep opening, expanding this, you would see data. You see the weather.home, the state is cloudy. And you can also see some of the attributes like the temperature, humidity, pressure, wind bearing, wind speed, and all sorts of things. So what we do need is to pick uh, these objects. So we need to read from these objects that are in this message. How do we do that? Let me show you right now. We're gonna open this over here, click on the three dots, and we should see this nice message. Now I have this already written out for the uh, speed of this video, so we can get on with the comparison. But just to let you know, so we got message, it's the same. So instead of hello, I'm replacing this with this text. Uh, good morning, this is Nerd Red greeting you. Today the weather is, and here we've got data.state. So data.state is this data object, and under here it's state. We could, we could have used also the payload, which is the same thing in this example. And the next one is data.attributes.temperature. So that will be data, attributes, and temperature. So you can see how it follows through. There's a tree and every time there's a new value, you just add a dot and you continue. We also have a little bit of text at the end, have a great day, and the language is still GB. So what we'll do is we'll take this out, remove this, click on done, click on done, and I can deploy this again, confirm the deploy, successfully deployed, and now, we're gonna try it again and let, uh, let's set it off. So I'm gonna set it off to off first. Let's see, reset it and then go to on. Good morning, this is Node Red greeting you. Today the weather is cloudy currently, it is 17.5 degrees. If you wanna learn more about Home Assistant and Node Red, I just released a new course in my platform, link in the description below. So we've got the message up and running, we figured out how to do it. There's one more thing we need to do with Node Red before we can go into Home Assistant. So I don't want this message to be played only once per day because if you think about it, it's gonna be quite annoying. Every time you're gonna go in the kitchen and go out and go in, this speaker is just gonna to continue to say the same message. So it's gonna get really, really annoying. Let's go and find a node, it's called delay. Go to the node box and just type in delay. You've got drag the delay in. And here we've got a few parameters we can set. Default is five seconds, just double click on that. Go to your, let's say days, and this changes to rate limit. So we want the, late, the rate to be only one message per, and then just say one day. And set that up, click on done. We're going to set this up in the way that we're going to disconnect this, drag this to this, and then drag it like this. Now the reason why I'm putting it here is because if there's motion, but the motion is before this time period, or outside of this time period, it doesn't count as being, you know, executed. But once it does pass this flow and go into here, then I want this to be limited only once. So each time you deploy again, the limit will get lost. So if I'm deploying now, so let's say we just set this to on. So we got the message through, but now if I were to try to do this again, so let's set it to off and let's set it to on, set state. Now you can see you have this one symbol over here. This actual one means it's gone over its limit, so it's no longer gonna proceed. I would say that this flow is complete now in, in Node Red. Before we jump into Home Assistant, remember to drop this video a like if you're getting value out of it. Let's go. In Home Assistant, go down to your configuration, click on 
automation and click add automations. I'm, I've already created this previously. It's called morning greeting and I'm gonna edit it with this pencil over here. I'm gonna actually talk you through how this works. First thing, we're just giving it a name, morning greeting. That's quite straightforward. Scrolling down, we've got a trigger. A trigger is a starting point. We're using the trigger type state and we've got the binary sensor, the kitchen motion. We're looking for the state to go on. Now the conditions, so the conditions are what prevents automations to be running, it's sort of, it's sort of checkpoints. So checkpoints, we've got a time period between six and 12. So this is a fixed time and we've selected all of the weeks, all of the days of the week. Um, so that's gonna enable us to have the greeting only within that time period. Now, the other one that we actually are looking into is this template, condition type template. And here's a little bit of logic and this looks a little bit uh, intimidating. What is actually doing? This is doing the same thing, the equivalent of node reds delay. You remember from here, we had this delay and we configured it in that way. Actually, this is code that you can write uh, to achieve the same thing. The way this works, I'm gonna show you how this works. So if I take this and I go to the developer tools and I go to the template and you can see I've got it right here, but I can just paste it in again and our result is false. Because remember with conditions, we want it needs to be either true or false. What this is, this saying, give me the state attribute of automation.morning underscore greeting. So if I pick this, go to the states and search for it in the filter entities, you'll see we've got this attribute here called last triggered and there's a specific time sample when there was, this was last triggered. So what we're checking is we don't want this automation to be triggered um, multiple times, right? Going back to the template, we have this last triggered and we've got um, expressed in seconds. So we want to know how many seconds. And then we've got 86,400, so 86,400, it's basically uh, a day. It's the amount of seconds that are in a day. So if it's greater than that, then we know that it, uh, more than a day has gone by. This is, uh, there are many ways of achieving the same thing. This will probably depend on the accuracy and depending on when it was actually triggered. So I'm imagining that if this was triggered at 8 a.m., and you got up the next day at 7 a.m. because only 23 hours went by, then potentially it will only trigger the next time there is motion in the kitchen after the, the 24 hours have gone by. Carefully think about this. This might not be uh, the exact right code that you want in your home automation solution. You might just change this um, to something that makes more sense to you. There's probably even a better way of writing this out. But this gives you an idea of what you can do with Home Assistant and sort of how this works. These curly brackets represent templates. Now in the action section of the, um, of the automation, we're using our cloud underscore say, we've got our entity ID, which is our kitchen speaker. We've got a language ENGB and we have this message and the message basically it's exactly the same as the message that a home uh, node red was saying. And you can see the message over here. It just says, good morning, this is Home Assistant reading you. Today the weather is, and we have, we're using states. So we're using this state weather.home to get the actual state. And we're using this state attribute to get the temperature of weather.home and expressed in integers. The reason why it's expressed in integers is because we just want whole degrees. We don't want uh, that precision, but that's not really up to you. And you can say, have a great day. It's sort of similar to what node Red was doing, but it's just a different syntax. So once you've saved it, if you run actions. Good morning, this is Home Assistant greeting you. Today the weather is cloudy currently, it is 17 degrees. Have a great day. And now we want to see which one of the two actually gets the, the quickest. Go to the states, we have our kitchen motion sensor, which is off and Let's see, everything is up and running. This is saved, so we'll give it a go. Let's see who goes first. On. Good morning, this is Node Red greeting you. Today the weather is cloudy currently, it is 17.5 degrees. Have a great day. Okay, so we got Node Red quicker than Home Assistant. Let me go and show traces. It did work, but I don't think because the speaker was already engaged, it didn't get a chance to do it. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to disable node red and just prove that Home Assistant still works. I'm gonna, I've disabled the flow. Let's go over here and let's see if Home Assistant actually does work. And on. Good morning, this is Home Assistant greeting you. Right, runtime 0.78 seconds. And the other one was 0.75. I'm going to try it one more time. And let's go on. Three, two, one. Good morning, this is Node Red greeting you. Node Red. The weather is cloudy currently. It is 17.5 degrees. Okay. Have a great day. So we've got 11.54. Home Assistant ran in 0.12 seconds, so very fast. However, Node Red got there even faster than that. Okay, so we're going to give it another go. We're going to try it for the third time. And we've got it on. And three, two, one. Good morning, this is Home Assistant greeting you. Today the weather is cloudy currently. It is 17 degrees. Have a great day. So Home Assistant this time was fastest. Let's see the actual time. So it's 0.98 seconds. Uh, the previous run was 0.12 seconds. So this time it did beat Node Red. So summary, Node Red beat Home Assistant two times and Home Assistant managed once. You could probably run this test a lot of times. There isn't much of a difference between the two, but in this example, Node Red was faster. She's slightly surprising as Node Red is running as an add-on on the Home Assistant server. And we'll be installing a Node Red on the Raspberry Pi on separate instance to see if the network delay between the communication between the two servers actually makes or breaks this whole experiment. And we might find out that Home Assistant is still faster. So in conclusion, for this morning greeting, Node Red was able to do it. And also Home Assistant, we were able to create it in both ways. Now, to be fair, I have a lot more experience with using Home Assistant and automations, but I found Node Red very simple to set up and it was very easy, especially the delay part. I found that it was a bit cumbersome in Home Assistant to add that condition template with the delay node was a lot easier. So I would score a point for Node Red for that. And also just looking at it and graphically, I think it's just easier to understand. Also to actually debug within the tool itself. So I was able to find out all of the properties of the object without leaving the tab. With Home Assistant, I had to basically shuffle between the developer tools, trying to find out uh, how templates would uh, work, then looking at the um, states and, and states attributes. But with Node Red, I was able to just to follow the tree that I showed you in the debug window, and I was able to get that working. So at this stage, Node Red 1, Home Assistant 0, but we'll see in the next episode which one will win. Now I'm gonna show you what's gonna feature in the next episode of this home automation series. We're gonna be looking at turning off lights. So let's say for example, we wanna have all lights turning off if they've been on for 10 minutes, one hour, one day, whatever you wanna set off. And I've got this automation up here in Home Assistant. You can see it, but this is what we'll be using next. In the next video, we're gonna be comparing Node Red and Home Assistant using the same automation and see how we can achieve there, which one is actually faster, and uh, just my comments overall. Let me know in the comment section down below which automation you want me to do next time. In the meantime, I've got the next video for you to watch. There's gonna be the next video of the series here, but in the meantime, I'm gonna put another playlist up and I'll pop it around when the next video is released. This was Geo from Smart Home Makers. I hope you enjoyed it. See ya, peace.